Hey guys, welcome back. So in this lesson, we're going to be going through a process called seeding. So seeding is where we provide some initial data to the database. And what we're actually going to do is just hard code some records that when we perform a migration afterwards, the migration will have instructions to create these records, update the database with these records, and it won't necessarily rely on user input. So at least that will provide a nice basis for our testing when we start developing the API endpoints. So what we want to do is go to our database context and we're, we're going to override a protected method that is really inside of the DB context. So protected override void on model creating and we are passing in the parameter model builder and I'm just calling it builder. And then what we'll say is something like builder dot entity. And then I have to specify which entity I'm dealing with. So we have country and we have hotel. Countries have to exist for hotels to exist. And that's really because of how we defined our records right we said country and then hotel has a foreign key so we have to have the country before we can put in that foreign key so i'm going to say entity country dot has data oh i'm sorry i'm missing a bracket pair there right so entity country and then open and close brace has data data sorry open and close brace and then Inside of this, we're going to define some countries. So we can define as many because it takes an array. So has data really takes an array of type country. So we can define a few records here. So I'm just going to define three. All right. So new country record with ID equals one. And once again, we are putting in the data, so we have to manually provide all of these values. And this is the first country that I'm putting. And the short name is JM. All right. And I'm just going to copy this and paste it to kind of reduce the typing. So this would be two and this would be three. And the next one let's say Bahamas and the short name for Bahamas if I'm not mistaken is BS and then the next one would be Cayman Islands so I'm just choosing some destinations some popular tourist destinations where you'd probably want to know what hotels are there right so the short name for Cayman Islands would be CI all right um, if I'm not all that accurate, then later on we can correct it. But for now, once again, these are example records, right? So I did that for country. I would just repeat that feat for the hotels, right? So I'm just, I just copied and pasted most of the code. I notice when I change this to hotel, it, it's going to change the expected parameters to type hotel or well it's saying object because it's not getting hotels here so that's fine we'll just change these out to hotel all right id name what else did we have for the hotel we had address so let me get this so this is sandals resort and spa so i'm actually familiar with some of them address let's just keep it short and say in the grill we already know the country the country is jamaica so country id would be one right and then the rating is last i heard it was i'm going to say 4.5 but i know it's a five star kind of resort so i'm just going to copy these details down all right so we have a hotel for Jamaica, let me just put a hotel per country just to make sure that we're spread right across. And I'm just going to make up something for Sanda, for Bahamas. So Bahamas, let's say they have Grand 
Grand Palladium. So I know for sure Grand Palladium is a hotel in Jamaica. But for example sake, we're putting it there. Oh, I put it at the wrong place. I'm sorry. So this should be country too. Let's just do that. And that's a four star. Once again, this is not factual. We're just making up data, right? So for Cayman, they have comfort suites. And dress, let's say George Town. The country ID is three for Cayman and the rating is 4.3 all right so that's us seeding some data into the database now this can get a bit crowded you could just collapse it like that so it doesn't take up too much space or what i tend to do also is actually move it to underneath the db set definitions so that when i come to make modifications to the db sets i can always just stack them on top i don't have to scroll all the way past that there are ways to extract this and put them in other files and call the configurations also. Um, but then this is just a quick win, a quick way to see the data into the database. So now that we have defined a few test records, the next thing that we want to do is add a migration. So I'm going to add migration. And this one we're going to call the seeding data. All right. So notice that each time I add a migration, I try to be descriptive enough with the name such that you can tell, oh, that's what happened at that point. So it's almost like source control for the data, right? And if you look at this, this migration file, you'll actually see here where it says insert data into this table. And these are the columns and those are the data values, right? So it will go ahead and do all of that. Right, I don't know why I turned my 4.3 into 4.2999999998. Not sure why, but that's just how it is going to reformat it so that it can do the insertions. So the next thing that we want to do is update dash database so that it can effectively carry out the commands in the migration. So it did say done. What I'm going to do is go back to my object explorer and then I'm going to right click and view data on the countries table. And there we go, we have data in our database. So we have successfully created our three countries and we can look at the matching hotels. All right, so that is how you can put initial data into your .NET Core applications using Entity Framework Core and the DB context.